October Red Boxing here with Promoter of the Year. Oh, thank you. Eddie Hearn, how are you? Very well, thank you. Looking forward to being back at the O2. Good to see AJ. I haven't seen him for a while. Been out. He looks uh, fresh, excited and ready for a big night. Have you seen any changes in him? You said he looks fresh and excited, but compared to how maybe he came in for Usyk 2, have you noticed anything different very, about him? Yeah, very intense for Usyk 2. Like, he put a lot of pressure on himself, and I feel like it's one of the reasons you saw the reaction after, which was that pressure and that expectancy to win. He was all, he's been all business today, but just more chilled, really. And I think this is, he doesn't really like, you know, no disrespect, but he doesn't really like coming to do the media days and stuff like that. He doesn't, I feel like he hasn't quite realised how big he is. Do you know what I mean? Like, as it, like he can't quite understand what all the fuss is about. It's just a fight, you know. And but he's obviously over there now in Texas. Things are a lot more chilled. He can probably breathe a, a lot better as well, and just do normal things. And he'll be looking to do, mate, take care of his media obligations, and then bugger off back to Texas and finish off camp. I'm not speaking out of turn, but I do feel that you feel more comfortable and relaxed. The fact that he's got Derek James as a trainer, just something that I pick up from you. I could be wrong, but you seem confident with him as a trainer. He's trainer of the year, you know, and, and you put your trust in someone that knows what they're doing. AJ's worked with some great trainers. Um, with AJ, it's just about belief. You know, it's about he he needs to feel comfortable that he knows what he's got to do. He's one of those guys that, you know, he's not a guy that's been boxing since he was six and had this natural ability as a kid. He went in at 17, 18, could, could knock people out and became world heavyweight champion, right? But if you tell him what to do, he can execute it really well. And that's what's given him his success. And I just feel like he lost a little bit of that belief that he went in there knowing exactly what to do, particularly against Usyk in the first fight. And it just... It's the communication be between a coach and the trust in a coach to look in his eyes and say, listen to me. Because when at the end of the fifth round um, or the sixth round against Vladimir Klitschko, Robert McCracken said, listen to me, AJ. And it was just that, that familiarity, that trust of just listening and understanding and implementing what I have to do. And if Derek James can get that into AJ then all of a sudden he becomes that confident beast again, which I, you know, I, I, I trust that he can do that. The auditions that we've had, auditions for who should fight AJ, talk to us about the relationship that you've got with his team that made you come to the decision, OK, as the combat fight, we're going to take Jermaine Franklin, who put a good account of himself against Dillian White last year. It's always difficult because like the trainer and the management will always want the easiest possible opponent for a comeback fight. And so they should, right? But we need to make sure it's someone credible at the same time. So we looked at a lot of guys. There was a couple of Southpaws mentioned. No value in him fighting a Southpaw. The trainer sort of said, don't see the point. You fought Usyk twice. You're not going to fight him again, certainly in the near future. So we, we should look at an orthodox fighter. And Franklin did give a great account of himself against Dillian. Some people felt he won the fight. I thought Dillian edged it, but it was very, very close. And... You know, he's been over to the UK before. It's a dangerous style for AJ. And, you know, he was the guy that everybody accepted. Um, they always turn up in better shape to fight AJ. Looks better already. And he's going to be giving it everything. And although he's coming off a defeat as well, he's full of confidence. And I, and I expect a difficult night's work. You talk about that difficult night work. AJ, like I said, coming psychologically coming off losses to come back and make sure he wins this fight. What do you see that AJ needs to really focus on as soon as that bell goes? Because he knows there's a lot of people staring at him, including yeah. you ringside. That pressure, whether he admits it or not, it's there. I think, you know, Franklin moves well. He's got a good chin. He's got good lateral movement. He, he catches and counters. A lot of stuff that Andy Ruiz does well as well, as Dimitri uh, focused on. AJ's just got to be sharp. He's got to be imposing. He's got to use his physicalities. You know, that size and that... I mean, he has the ability to throw people around like a ragdoll in there. You know, be strong on the inside. Impose that jab. Speed and combination punching. You know, he said up there, he said, look, a lot of people watch me and think this and think that, but when you get in there with me, it's another kettle of fish. And you can imagine a fighter getting in there and getting hit by a straight one-two and thinking, fuck me. 
Like, because one, the power's real, and two, the speed. And that's what he's got to do. And I think if he does that, I think he'll stop Franklin in, in the first half of the fight. But the more this, the longer this fight goes, with Franklin's tank, with his energy, which we saw in Dillian White, it starts to become a really tough fight. And, and I want to see him do damage early in this fight so we can just enjoy the victory and move on. We talk about doing damage early in the fight, something that AJ is he's kind of like this round six, round seven kind of guy. When you, I start getting worried when I see it go past that, it, it's kind of like a common theme. Do you think the training out there, the isolation, the no, you know, no friends hanging around, he said it himself, listen, I'm over there to train. Do you reckon that he's started to put things into place to ensure that if it does start to go the distance, the championship rounds, is ready to go that distance? Yeah, I think he's always trained as hard as he possibly can. He's never cut corners. He's never, you know, been ill-disciplined in camp. It's just different styles of fighting. Like, he used to do a lot of fitness work. Then he used to do a lot of boxing, 15-round spars and stuff like that. But when you get in there and you're the size of him and you're unloading them with the speed and ferocity and, and volume that he does, you're going to get tired. Don't forget he's coming off two 12-round fights to Usyk. You know, he was tired, more tired in the first fight than he was in the second fight. But it's still, it was like, it's mentally taxing in there against Usyk. So it's always going to be hard for him over the 12 rounds. But, you know, he's fit, he's strong, and he's more experienced now and he's wiser. And I think you used to see him gas out after three or four rounds because he'd literally throw the kitchen sink like the Dillian White fight. And he, he was pumped and, I mean, it was wild. So I think now he's more mature and more composed and I, I think he'll be fine. We're looking forward to seeing that calm, composed, mature fight from him. And I know that you've got to go, time constraints, etc. But hopefully I'll catch up with you next week with uh, Lara Woods, which I know is going to be a war. Yeah, we've got a couple of hundred tickets left. It's going to be sold out. Massive crowd, massive fight. Wood v Lara next week is going to be a thriller. Can't wait. See you there. And a final word from us. Thanks for putting out the schedules. It really does help people to start putting those dates in their diaries. Definitely something good moving in forward. In an ideal world, we'd like to do the whole year. It's not always that easy, but we've got two more fight nights, one in April, one in May to add. And then once we do that, it's a really solid schedule. And then we start planning the summer as well. Epic. Thank you so much for your time, Eddie. Always a pleasure. Hi, and thank you for watching October Red Boxing. Like, subscribe and tap the bell for notifications. You can also find us on Instagram at October Red Boxing and on Twitter, October Red UK. And remember, at October Red, we stay ready.